Hi everyone and welcome back to the MFT YouTube channel. It's Carolyn here and I'm popping in today to share another interactive card process video with you. I've been waiting for a chance to show you a super easy way to add light to your cards and I'm so excited to show you how to do it today. My project features the new Birthdays Take the Cake stamp set and coordinating dies as well as the Pear Blossom Easy Light All-in-One Lighting Units. Just wait until you see how easy it is to add light to your interactive projects. Let's get started. Off camera, I stamped and colored the images from the Birthdays Take the Cake stamp set, and here I'm using a 1 16th inch hole punch to punch out the flames of the candles on the cake. If you don't have a 1 16th inch hole punch, you could use a paper piercer to do the same thing. Once I have the holes punched, I'll use the coordinating dies to die cut the images. I'll also use the dome die from the tall snow globe dynamics to cut an aperture from a four inch by five and a quarter inch smooth white panel. I trimmed another panel from snow cone cardstock the same size as the white panel, which is four inches by five and a quarter inches. This panel will help hide the wires and battery pack. I'm arranging my images in the center of the dome aperture and once I have them where I want them, I'll trace the holes from the cake candles onto the snow cone panel. These are the holes that will allow the light to come through. I'll once again use my 1 16th inch hole punch to punch out the holes. I used the coordinating die for the cake to die cut a piece of bright yellow vellum that I had in my stash. If you don't have colored vellum, you could color white or translucent vellum with an alcohol marker to achieve the same look. I trim the candles away from the cake portion and I'm adhering them to the back of the cardstock image with tape runner adhesive. Okay, now let's get to the mechanics of the easy lights. This is a new product that MFT carries and it's an absolute genius product. I swear the hardest thing about these easy lights is getting them out of the package, as you can see from my video here. Everything you need to add lights to your project are included, including the batteries, and they come in two, three and five unit packs. I've positioned the two image panels onto an A2 snow cone top folding card base so that I can mark some guidelines for setting up the light placement. I'm marking the outer edges of the image panels and I'm also tracing the candle holes so that I know where the light should be located. Okay, now let's make some magic happen. It's been a while since I've used these light sets so I had a hard time remembering exactly how to arrange things. Let's face it, I can't remember what I did five minutes ago, let alone a few months ago. So it takes me a minute to figure out where I want to position the battery unit and how to wrap up the excess light wires so that everything is positioned correctly. But once I figured it out, everything fell into place pretty easily. I'm using some permanent glue dots on the back of the battery pack to adhere it to the card base. And I'm placing it in the lower right corner of the card base using those pencil markings to guide me. Any strong adhesive will work to hold the battery pack in place. I've wrapped the excess light wires up and positioned the lights in the area of the candle pencil markings. I'll secure the excess wire and the lights in place with some scotch tape. And when I press on that purple button, the lights come on. How amazing is that? I need some clearance between the card base and the image panels, so I've stacked three layers of foam adhesive squares at the bottom of the card base so that I'm sure there's no adhesive in the way of the battery pack. I also added three layers of foam squares to the back of the snow cone image panel, and I'll adhere the two together. Now I can start assembling the rest of the card. I'm adhering the cake to the image panel with some foam squares, making sure to align the holes in the candles. Then I can position and adhere the cake stand in place with more foam squares. Next, I've placed a piece of vellum into my mini Misty, and I'm positioning the sentiment towards the bottom of the panel. Once it's in place, I'll ink it up with some sweet tooth pigment ink and heat emboss it with some white embossing powder. I trimmed the sentiment strip so that the upper and lower margins were the same. I want to adhere the vellum strip to the back of the white panel and I want the sentiment to be centered on the cake. So I've flipped the aperture panel to the back and I'm positioning the vellum strip where I want it and I'll use my pencil to mark those positions on the left and the right. Then I'll adhere some quarter inch double sided tape to the aperture panel, remove the liner paper, and adhere the sentiment strip in place. Next, I want to stamp a word prompt to the lower right corner of the aperture panel so that the recipient knows what to do when they open their card. So I've stamped the word push and an arrow from the interactive label stamp set 
using black licorice hybrid ink. And then I'll adhere the aperture panel to the card base using one layer of foam squares. It turns out that I didn't need that arrow after all, as I decided that it looked better to adhere the cherry on top of the arrow. I think it's pretty straightforward, don't you? At this point, I feel like this birthday card needs a little more celebration. So I've adhered some of my favorite sparkling clear sequins with some liquid adhesive. And I realize that it's hard to see the lights come on under normal lighting, so I've turned off my extra camera lights to show you that the lights really do work. That'll do it for me today, friends. I've listed and linked all of the products that I used in today's video down below in the description box. I hope you enjoyed watching my video today, and if you did, be sure and subscribe to the MFT YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the great content that we have here. If you have any questions about today's video, be sure and leave me a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer your questions as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.